Karen, resilience is all about being able to bounce back after experiencing some sort of adversity, kind of like a tennis ball or something, right? Sure, if you want to explain it like that, yeah. Have you ever had like a tennis ball thrown at you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Were you able to bounce back? I mean, the ball bounced back. <laughs> I don't know about me. Well, if you guys are interested in how to build some resilience strategies, this show is for you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Gov Geeks Assemble. Level up your nine to five on 95. I'm Karen. And I'm Javier. Why are you switching up? <laughs> we like to keep things fresh here just to test your resiliency. <laughs> so we get together uh, every Thursday to talk a little bit about getting in and getting ahead in government, some lovely career strategies and all of that. And this week, we're talking about resilience. Resilience takes um, shape in a lot of different scenarios. It's not just career resiliency, but there's right. a lot of resilience out there. Right. But our fo main focus is how to maintain your resiliency during your career. Absolutely. Which is a, a big task uh, in and of itself. I, I mean, sometimes you could have some setbacks at work. There might be some issues or concerns. Perhaps you've been laid off. Uh, some experiences that really aren't all that great, but how do you bounce back in those scenarios is what we're talking about this week. Right. And I see it kind of instead of a tennis ball, more of a rubber band where you're kind of stretched to your limits, but you're still able to kind of come back into proper formation. Yeah. yeah and it's a, that's a, actually a fantastic metaphor as well, because depending on how well you manage and maintain the rubber band, there's only so much give that right. you can have. And if it gets older, a little bit more dried out and it snaps, that could be a problem. Uh, and when you're talking about different positions that we have in public service where people's lives are literally uh, in the balance, we need to make sure that we have enough resiliency to continue to do the work, serve the mission and serve the people. Mm -hmm. So I think we have more than three uh, tips this week. Yes, we're spending definitely more time on this one, but I think it's time well spent. Absolutely. All right. So let's just go ahead and dive in. Uh, Karen, what's the first one? So the first one is to nurture your relationships. Absolutely. Yeah. If there's a setback and you need to bounce back from it, it helps to go talk to individuals that really care about you. These relationships really are meaningful. Uh, it can be family. It can be the workplace. Well, I think having somebody in the workplace is crucial because mm -hmm. it's good to be able to to go to family and everything, but sometimes you just can't. And so it's good to have just somebody who maybe you can vent with at work just to like get some of your um, hesitations out. Or I think I have somebody who reaches out to me who just says sanity check, like <laughs> just want to make sure everything's OK, which I definitely appreciate. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's also important uh, as part of this network, it's not just about you reaching out to someone else, but perhaps you being available for others when they need some help as well. So it's this resilient network that's important. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I think that there's even some fun experiences that you can have as part of this. Uh, something about like you can go and rent a room where you like smash up everything. It's intentionally designed rage for you to rooms. go a rage room. <laughs> <laughs> Which I've heard those are technically not very good because you don't really deal with <laughs> the underlying issue, mm. but it's kind of like something where you get out your frustrations. I like axe throwing. Oh, axe throwing. That's always a great thing. We've talked about that before. <laughs> <laughs> axe throwing and kickboxing are a way to kind of, you know, do that. But we'll talk about that, I guess, a little bit later. And of course. But I mean, if your network involves you spending time with people that care about you and you knew them in those types of environments. And I think you really brought up a solid point. It's about also addressing the root cause of something, not just kind of like overlooking it. And these networks could be there for you to have these conversations. So it's not just an opportunity to have a bit of a whine, but also to really kind of talk through some things as well. Right. And for you to be able to notice when something's really not right. Um, in those conversations, I think is key to to be able to to pinpoint. Well, 
they're definitely going through something more than just, you know, the Mondays or as the office space would say. And what do you do in those types of situations? Of course. And also, I mean, mental health awareness is super important. So if you feel uh, the need to explore therapy or other areas, absolutely. I mean, it's just, it's important for our well-being to really embrace and go for that if it's appropriate. Right. And there should be support networks in your office as well. Um, employee assistant programs that can can help with that. Um, I know in in the government, oftentimes you do have individuals who are worried about going to therapy or things like that because it could impact security clearances. Mm -hmm. um, I think there was an episode on the West Wing that kind of dealt with that, oh, which yeah. was really Post -traumatic interesting. Stress, absolutely. Right. So I think it's just you have a lot going on, so you want to make sure that you have somebody to to talk to in those relationships and networks. Yeah. So really the thing is uh, nurture your network and all of your relationships. Make sure family, friends, coworkers, if there's other services that you need to have, build out your network to allow yourself to use it when you need it, as opposed to not having it. And then kind of like you're operating without a net, that, that could be dangerous for you because we can't all be 100%, 100% of the time. <laughs> Well, but it is okay to not be okay. Absolutely. It's absolutely okay to not be okay to identify uh, and come back to it. I mean, definitely. Yeah. Your, your health and well being is super important. We can replace many things, but we can't replace the people in our lives. Okay. So that's the first step in our tips for resilience. What's the next one? The next one is to realize that you are more than your title. Absolutely. Yeah. And when we say title, Title can mean any number of things, uh, friend, father, uh, you know, parents, coworker, director, you know, uh, Olympian, all of these different things where we place our value on a title. And we experience this a lot when we're working with our clients that, you know, as they're going through their career, they feel, well, I'm the director of, and I have all of these responsibilities. And then for whatever reason, they're not. And one of the bigger challenges is for them to try to come to grasp with who they are, because they are more than just whatever the title is. Mm -hmm. Or it could be like that um, Will Ferrell in that SNL skit where he's like, I am a manager. I drive a Dodge Stratus. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that was so, so good. He, I thought you were going to talk about cowbell for a second. <laughs> I don't know how that would fit in, but but yeah. But yeah, absolutely. Like when you define your value in your relationships based upon something as like a title, um, like you could be, oh, like again, back in the West Wing where uh, President Bartlett was talking a lot about him being president, but that doesn't mean that he could make his family <laughs> get along well or, mm -hmm. you know, want to spend time with them and everything uh, and vice versa. You can be like the the world's best parent, but that doesn't mean that you're going to be in the best of positions in the workplace either. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Karen, you, you have a lot of titles as well. You have a title of uh, mother <laughs> as well as, you know, parents. But you're going to say worldwide wrestling champion. <laughs> <laughs> World's greatest grandma. <laughs> was it Ant-Man and the Wasp? <laughs> okay. No. I was like, Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> that didn't go where I thought it was going to go. <laughs> but yeah. How do you manage all of these different hats and titles? I, I don't know. <laughs> I think it's, it's, it's constant. It's an ever growing learning challenge. So um, I think it's one of the main things I would say is awareness, mindfulness, to just be aware of your presence in the world, your um, interactions, how you feel, how you make others feel. Mm -hmm. It's really just being aware that, stems from, you know, everything that, that you do. And once you're aware, then you can notice things, you can work on things. Um, I think that, that that's the main underlying key, but it's, it's a constant struggle. I think it's, how do you balance work, life, everything else? You know, as, as I come home from work, I'm like, oh, well, gotta, you know, do other housework, gotta, you know, wash towels, got to, you know, do all these other things. But then you have to keep it in perspective, right? Many people don't have certain things. So be grateful for what you do have. Um, so I think it's, it's all of that inner monologue that goes on. Well, I, I think it, that's definitely true. And the idea that you're able to balance between 
who you are and what circumstance and what title that you have. It's not like your whole life is tangled up in one title that you have, the chic of geek. <laughs> you are much more than that, uh, even though you are that. I mean, you can be anything over any given time and any combination of it. We're these limitless beings, so we don't need to put ourselves in boxes in order to feel like that is who we are and only who we are. Mm -hmm. That's very, very key thoughts to have. Uh, well, what's the next strategy? So the next one is to keep a fuel folder. Oh, absolutely. Yes, a fuel folder is incredible. Uh, I have a couple of them here at home as well as in the workplace. Um, and essentially, yeah, you open up the fuel folder and you allow yourself to experience whatever is in the folder that fuels why you are there doing that. Uh, I have a lot of drawings from our girls when they were much younger uh, and just different notes and letters of accomplishment and things that they've had from school, things that they're so proud of and all that. Uh, nice memories that you and I have shared uh, over the years and as well as others from family and friends. And that kind of keeps me centered um, because when you ask yourself, well, why am I here? Why am I doing this work? Why am I making all of these sacrifices? The fuel folder is there to help you along the way. Mm -hmm. Keep you going. Yeah, absolutely, because it's what you care about. And if you're in the workplace and you have uh, an item of like a kudos or an accomplishment that someone like offered you that really made you feel good, you can go back and read that. Uh, I've heard of individuals who are first responders, for instance, reading letters from people that honestly were thanking them for saving their life for their family member's life and the work that they did was appreciated and noticed. Those sorts of things really do make a difference. Mm -hmm. um, Karen, what, what do you use for your fuel? A lot of it is the images that you and the girls put together. Um, it not only fuels me, but helps me on, you know, maybe a day when I'm not having such a great day and it helps bring some levity to it. And like you said, brings me back to center and focus on what's important and why I get up in the morning and go to work, even though, you know, oftentimes it's like, you know, you all are here and I'm at work and mm -hmm. um, that can sometimes be difficult because I'm missing out on things, mm -hmm. um, whether it's the delicious breakfasts that are made. They are really um, good. <laughs> uh, but again, it just kind of brings me back to, why I'm doing all of this, but then to also focus on what's important. Like don't focus on this negative part of the day. You'll go home, be able to be with family and focus on that, spending time with them. And that's the other thing is I try to, when I am at home, focus on being at home. Absolutely. Yeah. You're present where you are present. Uh, and that that's a challenging thing to do at times, but mm -hmm. I mean, ask yourself, honestly, what fuels me? What do you care about? Why are you doing this? And then create a folder or a special place that you have access to, to help remind you of all of that. Those are the things that really, I think are beneficial. Mm -hmm. Well, what's the next one? So the next one is to be objective with active measures. Oh, absolutely. Active measures. So you can measure the things that you have control over, but you obviously can't control things that you don't have control over. Like if you're going to say, I'm going to do this and then everyone is going to be wowed and absolutely, you know, impressed by everything, or I'm definitely going to do this and then get the promotion. Well, you don't have control over all of that, but you can control what you're putting into the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So if you can measure how well you do those things, the, that's better off that you're going to be. So if you're practicing for the next job interview, you can't control the interview, but you can control your preparation for the interview. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so what are some of the things that you have under your control, Karen? Mm, how I spend my time. Right. So if I have a project that I'm, that I know I need to work on, um, I'm in control of when I work on it, mm -hmm. right. To, to the most, or, you know, for the most part, um, some other things may come up, but essentially I am in charge of when I can prioritize things. So I cannot blame myself for not getting, you know, something done because I didn't prioritize my time properly. Mm. I can't control time, but I can, again, control what I do with it. 
Well, you know, on that note, I mean, kudos to you. Uh, one of the things I, I appreciate about you is how well you're able to control how well you care about your you're well-being. Say, how, you're, how you're able to control time. <laughs> exactly. Like Dr. Strange. Dr. Strange or Hermione Granger, you just like put the little thing on and spin the... Yeah. Like, don't tell him my secret. <laughs> You're in three places at any given time. Exactly. That's how I get it all done. Um, but yeah, I mean, you, you focus on what's important for you. So your sleep, your rest, um, setting your schedules and your clocks and your timers for everything that, that you need to do. If it's like you mentioned the laundry or if you are interested in having like clothes and you're dropping them off at dry cleaners and everything else, you manage those environments. Those are the things that you can definitely control and you do a great job of doing that. Right. Well, I think it what makes it hard is when it comes to the weekends where... I don't want to be on any schedule. Like I don't want it. Like, I think that's, <laughs> that's one of the things is I'm at, you know, such a tight schedule throughout the week and okay, I've got to get this done and, you know, mm -hmm. got to go to sleep at this time, but I have all this stuff to do. So during the weekend is when I have the harder time of, don't tell me what time I need to be somewhere. It's not going to happen. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but it's great because, uh, I mean, if you're going all engines all the time, it leads to burnout. So it's nice that you take the opportunity to just kind of pop it in neutral, allow all of everything to kind of cool down a little bit rather than, you know, pushing yourself too much. Right. And it, it was kind of funny because I think it was today. Today when I was driving home, saw a license plate and I, you know, it said, um, play hard or something like that. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, I'm trying to understand that. I mean, I get the saying, right? Work hard, play hard. Um, but it just said play hard. I'm like, I don't know. I think I'd rather just work hard. Because <laughs> it's just, that's where I see the, you know, for me, the value in, in working hard rather than if I play hard, you know. Absolutely. What's the end result? Even though, yes, probably stress relief and stuff like that, but. And I think in general, that's just the point of why we're talking about this for resilience. It's about controlling what you can control mm -hmm. and making sure that you are allowing yourself to not be become a victim to something of a circumstance that you can't control. Mm -hmm. And if something honestly does happen that is out of your control, at least you know that you've done everything that you could to manage all of that. And there's never a hundred percent guarantee on anything, right. but we do the best that we can and we can control what we can. Uh, but outside of that, yeah, you're, you're able to grow and learn from that. That's the whole point of living. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think, especially with the pandemic going on, um, uh, we, we talked about uh, when kind of we were in the thick of it, right? Like how do we manage through all of this? Because it was very, um, anxiety inducing. Mm. And one of the things that you could control is how much news you absorb. So one of the main, you know, pieces of guidance was, you don't you know, definitely you want to know what's going on out there, get some news in the morning, but then just sh shut it off. Mm -hmm. Right. Because if you have that constant inundation of the news, the bad news, oh, this is going on, then it just seeps in into your psyche and just, you know, causes an issue. So you can control how much news you take in. So you can be informed, but not overdo it. So exactly. again, what you can control. What you can control. Um, so what's the next strategy? So the next one is take a vacation. Yeah. And vacation can mean any number of different things. I, I mean, yes, this could be, uh, I have enough money, so I'm going to fly a spaceship into outer space for 10 minutes. Or it could be, well, I'm going to be able to stay home, uh, get off early from work, or take in some intentional downtime and spend time with people that you enjoy being with, mm -hmm. people that you care about. Uh, I mean, manage these things. There are so many people that we have the chance to work with, so many of our clients and colleagues that unfortunately get really burned out. And then when I ask a question, quite simply, how much vacation time do you have? Oh, yeah, lots. <laughs> I just never have a chance to use them. Uh, that That's part of the challenges. Because if you are placed into a position where you can't use it or you don't use it, then it leads to burnout and it leads to turnovers. So allow yourself the opportunity, kind of back to that metaphor about the rubber band, to re recharge and rejuvenate or else it's going to snap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, get that elasticity going so you're pliable so that, yeah, you don't snap. 
Yeah. And again, vacation can mean anything that is of interest to you. I mean, like we like to go to uh, Awesome Con and other comic book conventions and, you know, do cosplay and spend time with friends and all that. And that's just a nice little thing for us. But what is a vacation for you? What are some thoughts that you guys have on what's important for you and how no do you schedule. take advantage of it? <laughs> exactly. That's even a wonderful thing, too. Yeah. If you could say, yeah, uh, I have to do all of this stuff. Or I choose not to. Mm -hmm. I, I, and so we're not saying, you know, completely, you know, don't pay your taxes and <laughs> shirk all of your responsibilities and everything, but give yourself a break every now and again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Vacations are a great thing. Plus, at the end of the day, when you look back on things that you remember, do you remember all of those daily meetings that you have to go to all the time? Or do you remember the time where you had a chance to walk outside with the family member or talk to your parents, you know, while you still have them around. I mean, these are important things that we have to uh, have to take advantage of while you have them. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Next resilient strategy. <laughs> next one. And final one mm. is one of my favorites to know your value. Know your value. Where did you hear that one before, Karen? From Peggy Carter. <laughs> Peggy Carter herself. Exactly. <laughs> this was great in uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. or Agent Carter, actually. Um, that was one of the best lines that she had. I know my value. She didn't need to know what another person's perspective was of her. She wasn't allowing them to have the control over how she saw herself. Mm -hmm. She recognized her own value. And I'll add a little asterisk here to like add in, be authentic. Because mm. it's all about you. Yeah, being true <laughs> to yourself. Yeah. Uh, what's important for you? What's important what's to yourself? What's your purpose? Yeah. And also really... Here's an interesting thought, especially like in the marketplace when you're looking for a job and everything, just because someone isn't willing to pay for whatever the salary is that you require, that doesn't mean that that is not what your worth is. Your worth is greater than that. Maybe they just don't have the vision or the opportunity to really take on what that value is that you are providing. Allow yourself the freedom and flexibility to find where you can be treated the way that you need to be. And knowing your value isn't just about, you know, a person paying you correctly. It's making sure that you're treated with respect. Mm -hmm. It's making sure that you are working in an environment that actually cares for you and respects you, uh, where you feel comfortable in. Right. And where you also know your values and make sure that what you're doing for your career coincides with those values. Because we've talked about it before, where if you know what your values are, and for some reason, your tasks in your job are basically battling it out, it's just going to cause this internal struggle that um, will be difficult to deal with. And if those go against your values, and that, that is something that knocks you back, well, you can say, well, I made the best decision I could based upon what values I hold or my understanding of what my own values are. So if another person is yelling at you or asking you to do something that goes against whatever your values are, um, you at least know from your center what your value is, what your values are, and you don't need to allow that to be something that you absorb because you, you can reflect <laughs> all of that off, just like someone throwing a tennis ball at you. It just bounces off because yeah, it leaves uh, a pain, but it doesn't linger bounces off. Mm -hmm. You're able to be resilient and bounce back. Yeah. So I like that thought. So that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, Karen had the awesome opportunity to meet the uh, Peggy Carter, Haley Atwell. That was a pretty good experience for you there as well. It was a funny experience too, because I, I forgot what I was having some sort of allergic reaction and I took some Benadryl and we went to the Comic Con, which was in Baltimore. Your lips were very voluptuous. For some reason, you just had very, very full <laughs> lips. Very full lips for some reason. So they were swelling up, took some Benadryl. Um, and I think the Benadryl must have been expired because they just was not kicking in. And so she took an extra. <laughs> so I'm sitting there in, or standing there in line. And all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, <laughs> I was about to pass out. And then I, I met Haley Atwell. So. So you were like almost like literally were swooning, just falling into Haley Atwell's arms. Exactly. <laughs> but still, you know, that, that's a great thing because you that's a story that you remember because you took the time, you took the vacation to be able to go out there and, and meet her. And now you have that wonderful story and wonderful experience. Yes. 
<laughs> These are the things that really, you know, make it all worthwhile. I think this is great. That's also why we have so many cool, um, you know, memorabilia and things here in the background, because these are the things that allow us to have resilience and to share with you our, our passions about geekdom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we have uh, just a couple of minutes left. Uh, we have time for, I believe, one question mm -hmm. from uh, the Gov Geekdom. Please feel free to come out to the govgeeks.com. Go to contact us and submit a question. Or you can actually uh, just write to us on LinkedIn or you know email, all of those fun things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we're happy to answer your question here live on our show. Uh, okay. So Karen, what is the question that we have this week? So it's a really good question. And I would think of this in the spectrum of career. Um, should I be mindful of my social media posts? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, I remember this came up uh, a while ago, but the, the larger idea being, you know, this new digital era and are people going to find everything on Facebook or Twitter or, you know, TikTok uh, about what I've said or what I've been experiencing? Should I, you know, go on a crazy rant and write stuff? Well, you know, I guess that's a great question. To a degree, you want to represent the best of yourself in all of your circumstances and situations. And we know that we all have, to one degree or another, for the most part, a social media presence. Um, but if you're willing to say, this is who I am and this is how I am. Um, be authentic. Be authentic. Exactly. I, I think as long as you're not harmful or hurtful or, or mean or you wouldn't act or treat someone poorly in that type of a circumstance, then... Yeah, I mean, be you, live your life. I don't know, what are your thoughts? Should we be censored on uh, social media? I don't think you should be censored, but just like, and if you wouldn't say, you know, goes back to what is that old adage when we were growing up, if you wouldn't say it to somebody's face, you know, like why would you? Thumper. If you don't have something nice to say, don't say anything nice well, at all. Well, not necessarily that, but because some people will be mean right to your face. But I'm just saying, if you wouldn't say that to somebody's face, why would you say it behind a keyboard? Oh, that's a great point. So that 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 that's where I'm getting um, with it. And again, yeah, if you want to be, you know, authentic in that sense of the word, and you know, just yeah, I would still be mindful, just because, especially as let's say you're coming out of college, and then later on in your career, which we've seen this happen to many people, where they go way back and pull things out from the archives and you know, yeah, that was you when you were younger, you were, you know, your, what is it? Medulla oblongata hasn't, Medulla oblongata hasn't fully formed. Yeah. Hasn't fully formed. So, um, you know, people will make mistakes and I think it's just, how do you own up to those actions? And I think that's the other thing is you, you own it. Like, yeah, that's, that's what I said, but it was at this point in my life and maybe I feel differently. Maybe I don't, but I think it's if you're going to be authentic and if you're going to own it and if it's something you would, you know, do in person, then I guess. Yeah. But as far as careers go, then just be prepared for if it does impact your career. Interesting, because this is just a new topic in, in general now that that we're living with. Uh, I mean, it, it could have been something where something happened in the past and you said one thing or the other, and it's one person's word against the other. But now if you have something that's recorded and it's posted everywhere and everything, uh, I mean, I, I think it kind of goes back to what, what Karen was talking. I mean, how do you hold yourself in these environments and situations? And maybe the bigger question is, if you are trying to manage your social media presence by, you know, being authentically you, and if you have a worry or a concern that someone would think poorly of what you're doing there, well, maybe that's a question to reflect on. Is what you're doing actually something that you should be doing or that is worthy of what you have to offer this world? <laughs> and if it's not, then, well, maybe you shouldn't be doing that. So maybe it's the question of not social media or not. It's just, are you behaving the way that you feel that perhaps you should? Right. Or are you behaving in a way that aligns with your values? Absolutely right. Exactly right. And I, I think it also goes back to what we were saying earlier on. Um by the platinum rule, uh, treat others as they would like to be treated, not just that do unto others as you would like to be done unto yourself. You know, try to help uh, and be as valuable to others as possible. But at the end of the day, this is our lives and these different decisions that we make, we have to live with whatever our decisions are. So 
But if anything else, we're happy that you are looking on social media and watching the Gov Geeks uh, on LinkedIn, on YouTube, and other great platforms and everything as well. So we really appreciate it. Um, Karen, this is my favorite part of every show that we do. You do such a great job of condensing everything into a last thought or a last statement. Uh, I'm curious for you, this concept of resilience, what is the final uh, thought that you have? It helps you grow. So just see it as an opportunity to stretch your abilities in a safe way and to be able to come back to center. And always, if within these venting sessions with your network, with your relationships, if there's anybody that you see is having a hard time, just be there for them. And we'll provide some information on numbers that you can call in case there are concerns about somebody's mental health um, so that you can make sure to have the support and provide the support that they would need. Absolutely. Thank you, everyone, for your service, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you.